Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of little questions. Some of these questions are too small for a whole video, so I'm putting a few of these together for you into one video to answer them for you. I get asked a lot about oils. Now, in my videos, you'll see me refer to oils as lipids. The reason I call them lipids is because they're oily substances. Lipids as a class of chemical includes your plant oils, oils as you would know them, but also your mineral oils, your silicons, your esters, caprylic, capric triglycerides. All of these materials provide emolliency in a finished product. Now I call them lipids because it also includes some of your waxes and some of your butters as well. So instead of talking in my videos about oils, butters, waxes, esters, silicons, or mineral derivatives, I just say lipids. And that way I'm talking about emollient substances. Now I've been asked, are there natural oils other than plant oils? And yes, there are. There are a lot of naturally derived esters. So you'd need to actually contact your suppliers and ask them for their esters and see if they have a green rating about how naturally derived they are. If the starting stock, the fatty acid and the fatty alcohol that goes into making the ester or if it was jojoba oil, which is actually not an oil, it's actually a wax ester in liquid form, then you can obtain naturally derived esters. They do generally have a nicer skin feel than a lot of your traditional plant oils. There are synthetic esters, of course, as well. So if you're looking for naturally lighter alternatives to plant oils, Esters are a great choice, but check them carefully because they're not all naturally derived. There are a lot of synthetic esters as well. And you can even get some great synthetic versions that have been manipulated to give extra gloss or that tacky, glossy feeling in lip glosses, for example. And a lot of those materials aren't totally natural. So if natural is important to you, make sure you check your supplier documentation carefully. But yes, there are light skin fill alternatives to silicons and mineral oils, and they are your chemical class known as esters. Just check the paperwork to find out how natural the materials are before you just assume they're natural because there's a lot of synthetic esters as well. I also get asked about incorporating oils into surfactant formulas. Well, let me explain it to you this way. If you've just cooked a really greasy meal, let's say you've just fried some chicken. When you go to wash that dish, you've got a lot of grease in your pan, you put this into a big sink full of soapy water, as you put your dish into the water, what happens to the bubbles? They disappear. And that's because the surface active agents that create bubbles want to trap the oil and put them inside their micelle. That's the chemical term. But we don't want a lot of oil in a surfactant formula because if we put a lot of oil with our surfactant materials in our bottle, guess what's going to happen for the consumer? Nothing. Because the micelle, the surfactant, is going to capture the oil in the bottle before it's even dispensed or applied to the consumer's skin or hair. Now consumers want a lot of foam from their foaming products. So if we put a lot of oil in those formulas, we're gonna get rid of the foam and the consumer will also feel an oily residue left on their skin or their hair after they wash the product off. So basically you're not gonna have a happy consumer if you just add a lot of oil to your foaming products. You'd normally need to leave this to 1% or less at an absolute maximum so that the foaming and cleansing is not affected in your foaming formulas. Now, there is an alternative. We call them super fatting agents. Now a super fatting agent is a partially water, partially oil loving substance. Chemically, it is another surfactant. But in cosmetic chemistry, we call them super fatting materials when they have a partially oil loving, partially water loving uh, portion that go into a formula as a conditioning additive that will form part of the surfactant micelle to help with the conditioning feeling but won't destroy the foam profile. So there are a special class of materials called super fatting agents that have a water loving portion that you can use in foaming products without impacting their performance. But you don't wanna add a lot of straight lipid material because otherwise you'll lose your foam and you won't get great cleansing performance either. 
Now, lipids are of course great in your emulsions, but that's why we don't add a lot of oils or lipids to a foaming product because they'll ruin the performance. I've been asked about glycerol stearate. Is glycerol stearate the same as glycerol stearate SC and glycerol stearate citrate? No, they're not. They're actually three different chemicals. I have on the screen the true inky name and the CAS number reference so that you can see they are actually three different materials. Uh, glycerol stearate, straight glycerol stearate, has a low HLB value, it's non-ionic, and it's best suited in water in oil emulsions. Glycerol stearate SE and glycerol stearate citrate are high HLB, they're anionic, and they're best suited to oil and water emulsions. So no, they're not the same. Uh, you can't use them interchangeably and they have different performance attributes in formulas. So just make sure you're picking the right material for your formula when you go to use one of these materials. I've been asked a lot about how do we pick the right emulsifier, the right preservative. Uh, I've got to say straight away this is an entire subject, not just a video. So if you do want to know more about learning how to select the right type of preservative for formulas, the right types of emulsifiers, how to know if they're going to suit green or natural philosophies, how much to use, uh, when they suit different formulation types, you really should learn it properly and of course we can teach you how to do that. I get asked about which sites can you go to to check for cosmetic regulations. Again, I'd like to say you really need to learn this properly because companies who put a product onto the market, regardless of whether you formulated it or manufactured it, the company putting the product onto the market is responsible to ensure the product is safe when used as directed and complies with all compliance requirements for the region in which it's sold. It's that simple to the regulators. So if you're going to have a cosmetic product in the market, you need to make sure it's checked properly for safety and quality, complies with all requirements, is of course safe when used as directed, and only uses permitted ingredients in the amount specified by the regulators. Now, if you don't have the skills to do that yourself, you should be outsourcing it or you should be learning it. It's unfortunately too big a topic for one little video, but you can also search on the COSING database. I love this database and if you study with us, we teach you how to use this very thoroughly because it's one of the best databases in the world. It does of course contain your EU and UK regulations, which also cover ASEAN and African regulations as well, but it's a fantastic database and source of information if you're looking up any sort of cosmetic ingredient. I get asked uh, by some people, what's some suggestions for small brands starting out and how can you start that small brand? And also where can you get certain types of materials as a small brand? Of course, in my videos, I use materials that are accessible even for small brands where possible. But the truth of it is, if you want something unique and different or that performs in a certain way, sometimes you've just got to buy a bigger quantity of the material. I created a Facebook group for small brands. Now, I'm not generating any income out of this Facebook group. It's not there to sell materials. I don't sell materials. But I created this group because I get asked that much this question, where can I get materials as a small brand? So please join this Facebook group, post the country you're in and the material you're looking for. You may have a supplier contact you that can provide you with small quantities of the material you're after. And there may also be someone else on that group that wants to split a large pack with you. For example, let's say you need five kilos of a chemical you can only get in a 20 kilo bag. If you post which country you're in and the name of the material and ask someone if they want to split a pack with you, you may get contacted by a few people, you can purchase your 20 kilo pack and you can split it amongst yourselves and that way you can get some of these great materials that you may not be able to purchase on your own. On this page there is also a link to another website where there is a lot of small material suppliers from around the world for small chemical inputs depending on your location. And of course if you are a raw material supplier watching this video, we want you to post there if you can supply in small quantities. For the raw material suppliers that post in this group, please post the locations you can supply to. 
please post your minimum order quantity in the post, otherwise we will need to remove it. We have had some raw material suppliers uh, post about large supply, that is not what that group is about. But if you are a supplier that can provide in small quantities, there are a thousand or more people that want to hear from you. So please post in this group. And if you are a small brand looking to either find a supplier that can provide you chemicals in small quantities, or to split packs with other like-minded small brands in your area, please post in this group. That's what the group was created for, to solve that particular problem. While on this topic, I also get asked, how can I build my network, especially when you're new and starting out? And I also get asked, how can I get a job in the industry? Well, the best advice I've got for you is to get in your lab and practice, practice, practice. If you're looking to develop your own range, then you're going to need to make more than one sample to get it right. Uh, if you're looking for a job in the industry, the best thing you can do is practice so that you're confident in building formulas and using different materials. And then when you apply for a job, send in samples of the materials you've made with formula and method with your resume and the right qualification. Now, if you're looking for a job within, in this industry, our Diploma of Personal Care Formulation is the qualification that companies look for when they employ a cosmetic chemist. So send in those samples, your formula, your method, make sure you've got the right qualification on your resume. And we do post jobs available on our website. We will also post jobs for employers absolutely free because we want to help our students and graduates find employment in the industry. So if you're an employer looking for someone with our qualification, please email us. We will post your job advertisement absolutely free and we'll also send it out to our students and graduates for them to apply directly to you. It's all about joining industry together. The other thing with our qualification, you can join your local chapter of the Society of Cosmetic Chemists. This is fantastic for networking. Go to your industry meetings, go to your local chapter meetings, they're all over the world. And that way you can meet contract manufacturers, other manufacturers, raw material suppliers. You can meet specialists that will help you with your trademark questions. You can meet regulatory agents, you can meet other chemists but the networking is all there. So again, you can join your local chapter of your Society of Cosmetic Chemists and start attending regular events. It's also great to attend your exhibitions like In Cosmetics. Now these are around the world and they are the best networking event to see the latest material launches and meet with industry experts on site, as well as meet with all your raw material suppliers. You can also meet with equipment suppliers and testing houses. So you can't be shy, make sure you get out there and network, but the best thing you can do to build your confidence and get some experience is to practice, practice, practice in your lab. It's one of the most fun times I have, and I hope that you see that in some of the videos I record. That's also how I keep up to date with all the trends and launch information. I do get asked, what's the difference between your YouTube videos and a course with you? Oh my goodness, there's so many differences. The YouTube videos are here to show you about some of the latest formulation trends, to answer some of your questions, to demonstrate solutions to problems, to show you materials that I'm really impressed with, and to debunk some of the myths that are out there in our personal care industry. But actually learning how to formulate is an entirely different matter. So when you do study with us, you do get access to our drop box database which has several thousand materials in it and supplier contact details. You also get access to password protected videos that have way more content than free YouTube videos do. You get text, you get a practical kit, you get support from a trainer. You also get assessments, yes assessments, and with our diploma you have an exam you need to sit through and this is so that we can monitor your understanding and learning and make sure you're getting it right. You of course do get the industry and internationally recognized diploma qualification when you study that program. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have additional questions and comments, please leave them below because I'm expecting some extra questions. I'm hoping for extra questions because I'm going to do more videos just like this for you.
Make sure you subscribe to receive notifications of all our videos and please check out our YouTube channel. We have over a hundred different topics now, a lot of them because you've asked. So make sure you keep asking because I'll create the videos as long as you're interested in watching. Make sure you contact us for any additional information and all of our formulas and reports are available just by emailing us. We're happy to send this information absolutely free. Make sure you join the Facebook group for small brands. If you are a small brand or a raw material supplier that can provide to small brands, you're looking to get connected and hopefully in that group, you'll find the right people in the right region to help either provide the materials or purchase your materials from you. And of course, make sure you join your local chapter of the Society of Cosmetic Chemists, get to your networking events, and I'll hopefully also see you at an in cosmetics event near you. Happy formulating.